So today I'm going to show you how to on on an emergency or in a in a rush uh, without the proper test equipment how to test for a leakage on a capacitor. If you repair vintage equipment, you know that we need to often test for leakage. It's the most common test we do on capacitors. And if you don't have a capacitor tester, if you just want to get a radio going or a TV, if you don't want to buy that equipment, if you need the commodity to do the repair right now, I'm going to show you a way to do it. Uh, of course, I'm not going to follow uh, very strict safety norms, but you can apply this method and be safe. So please don't use this as a straight tutorial, just as a guideline. And uh, let's go to the action. So we got here on the floor a big mess. What we have here, we have a WIMA capacitor. It's rated at a thousand volts, 0 0.005 microfarad. I know that this capacitor is bad. I haven't tested it yet, but these Wima Brown capacitors are always bad. And it's a thousand volts capacitor. We're going to test it at a hundred and something volts. And you might say, oh, that's too low voltage. Yes, but if this capacitor is leaky, it will still leak a bit at a hundred and something volts. So as I'm going to show you right now. So how, how do we have this set up? So one of the meter leads is going directly into the mains like this. The other meter lead goes to the capacitor. The capacitor goes into a diode. Any diode will do. Doesn't matter if you put it like this or like this. Really doesn't matter. We just want a bit of DC. And from the diode goes to my CAT2 super insulated screwdriver. And we're going to stick that right here. As you can see, it's a thousand volts capacitor, but it's leaking about 20 volts and we're only feeding it a hundred and something so it's completely completely gone and now I'm going to put in a, a more decent capacitor in its place and we'll see the result of course before you handle that you need to short it or discharge it you can short one lead to the other if the capacitor is bad doesn't matter if the capacitor is good you can put a resistor across it with some jumper wires careful not to touch it because it will get shot and don't do this use a plug use whatever you want to use to stay safe I don't care I have the right to be electrocuted so I'm just showing you the process so let's remove this sucker and put in a good one so we have here this yellow Philips capacitor at least it was from a Philips set I know it's rated at 250 volts but I don't know the value because it, the markings got erased. It is probably fine. These capacitors almost never leak. So let's test it. Yeah, I know this meter is garbage. <laughs> it's just uh, it still kind of works. I have a better one, but for this type of stuff, it's more than enough. So watch the meter. Did you see that? It jumped to 27 volts and then it went r right down to zero, 0 0.05 so it's basically zero it will never never be zero 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 but it's basically zero volts if we, if we go down the scale 0 .0, 0 0.05 something like that so what you actually saw here was the capacitor charged up you saw the voltage spike and it immediately came down to zero so this is what you want to see you want to see the capacitor charging and you want to see when the capacitor is discharged no current will flow no voltage will be present on the meter so if it takes too long to uh, to charge if it doesn't go to zero like this the capacitor is leaking if you t if you're testing a 630 volt capacitor or 500 volt capacitor doesn't matter if it's leaky you will see that even at 100 volts you will see that if it charges immediately about it depends on the capacity but generally takes one or two seconds to to charge so more than that replace it and so there it is all you need is a three euro multimeter some 2 euro jumper cables 
scrap diet and of course electrical power in your house nothing else of course there are more reliable and safe ways to do this but uh, i wanted to show this to you because i i'm lazy and i have been doing it like this for a couple of years now and i have had great success other another test that you can make which is safer than this is you buy a cheap multimeter like this this one actually doesn't have a capacitance test but i have other that that has it you put it in capacity mode you know that this guy is 0 .005, uh, 0.05 microfarad what will happen if it's leaky well if it's leaky it, it will take a longer time to charge it may not even charge fully never may even be shorted but generally it will take a very long time to charge so what will happen is on the meter it will show up a much higher capacitance so most people that are new to this they think oh this capacitor is very good it's a 0 0.05 and it's showing 0 0.1 it's actually double the capacitance well it's not the case it's not a tolerance defect it's not uh, the capacitor is super good it's actually the opposite the capacitor is so leaky, so leaky that the meter gets a wrong reading. It takes a much longer time to charge and the meter gives it a very much higher value. So another pretty safe test that you can make but it's not as reliable as this is to simply plug the capacitor into a capacitance tester and if it shows the exact capacitance or lower then the capacitor is probably fine. If it shows the exact capacitance or higher, it will for sure be highly leaky. So you can detect if it's highly leaky. It even works on electrolytics. This test with the power socket doesn't work quite well with the electrolytics, but if you use the second method I described, plug this into a capacitance meter and check the capacity it works with electrolytics for example i can't show it right now because the meter has got no battery but if i put a new 47 microfarad electrolytic on my meter it shows 32 microfarad on a new capacitor if the capacitor is leaky it may show 50 it may show 60 and uh, i'm kind of used to to those values and I know when a capacitor is faulty or not with that particular meter. So it's another test that you can make.